Okay, so now that we have the sodium methoxide all mixed up, uh, you can tell this container is, is getting warm because this is an exothermic reaction when you mix the uh, lye and the methanol together. Uh, we make sure and mixed it up thoroughly and made sure that it heated up and uh, now that it's, we've, we've let it sit for about 20 minutes or so, we're going to go ahead and bring the product into the processor. Uh, we've, we've got the heat on right now. Uh, I would say that, I mean, I can hold this this uh, piece of metal. I'd say we're probably at about 130 degrees. Uh, this temperature will actually go up a little bit when we bring the methoxide in. So right now we're gonna we're gonna bring it in. Uh, the pump will. Right now what we're doing is we're we're mixing the product from the bottom. We're pushing it up through the top and we're just mixing it around. So when we bring the methoxide in, it'll mix in the pump first of all. And then I'll bring it up and I'll blow it into the to the mass here and I'll start to stir it up. Uh, I want to bring this in slowly enough to where I can bring the entire mass of this container through the pump about twice. So what that means is is about 10 minutes. I want it to take about 10 minutes. So I'm going to set my valve so it'll suck it in at about that rate. Safety first. Okay, this is kind of a unique thing and uh, you know I may hit upon this at different times throughout this demonstration but uh, I'm bringing this in with a suction so this is actually on the suction side here uh, and I have a check valve installed so it can't blow pressure back in and blow product out so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and open the valve and it's 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 it might suck it in very slowly, but it's not going to suck it in very fast at all until I restrict the product coming out of the container. As soon as I make a restriction here, you'll hear a change in the motor, and it'll, this, this hose will jump, and then it'll start to come out. So I, I'm going to put this at about half flow. You heard the pump change. And now what I do is I look at the level here, and I can see that it's slowly starting to draw that in. So rather than sit here and let you watch that go for 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna we're gonna stop the film and then we'll come back after it's all brought. We're rolling. Okay, so we've had our uh, mixture here rolling for about an hour and 10 minutes or so. Uh, the, the pipe is still really hot. Uh, feels like everything's working fine. So I'm gonna check it now to see if uh, the reaction's complete. Uh, this, is, this valve, if I open this valve, it would bring it from here and dump it into the settling tank. Right now it's all going back into the processor. So I'm going to reach in, stick this under the spout, and get a sample. Alright, so... Uh, I'm going to set that there. It's going to take about five minutes for this to settle out. The glycerin will fall out. The bio will be on the top. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that bio off the top. I'm going to mix it with methanol. I'm going to see if any monoglycerides, diglycerides, or raw vegetable oil falls out. So in a few minutes, we'll check that out. Okay, so after about 5-10 uh, minutes, uh, mm -hmm. after pulling the sample off, we saw the glycerin settle out to the bottom and the biodiesel is on top. Again, this is raw biodiesel, so not washed. Um, I am going to do a completion test right now. So uh, the completion test that I do is a version of the Varnkvist test, also known as the 327 test. Uh, it's 3 parts biodiesel to 27 parts methanol. Uh, this is pure uh, methyl alcohol. Again, heat uh, this is a good place to get, uh, you know, pretty pure methanol. I guess you could use the product that you use to uh, transesterify, but this is pretty sterile, I guess, and, you know, I haven't had any problems, so I just like to do with what I've had success in the past. <clears throat> uh, being that this is the 327 test, that's a ratio of 1 to 9 parts, so you got 3 parts to 27 parts. Uh, you could multiply that, you could double that 27 times 2 to 6 parts, you know, as long as it's a ratio of 3 to 27, you're good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure out with my graduated cylinder, 
I'm going to measure out, you know, approximately. Uh, I'm going to try to get as close as I can to uh, 27 parts of methanol. There's 10. Twenty-seven. Okay. And uh, I, <laughs> I made this. I put this on. I measured out three milliliters, and then put this line here, so I don't have to measure it out every time. I can just suck suck it up to this line. And that's three milliliters. So I just bring it off the top. And put it in. Um, they would like to have, I believe this test, the inventor of this test, Jan uh, Varnkvist, uh, I believe that they wanted this to be done at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> so regardless of that, um, what we're looking for, methanol will not dissolve vegetable oil, but it will dissolve biodiesel. So if there's any vegetable oil in this, it should fall out to the bottom. And I don't know if that's in any way we can try to peek in there. I see those couple of small... There's just... It looks like there is a tiny, tiny bit, I don't know how good that's coming through, of uh, something at the bottom, and that's probably going to be a little bit of mono dye or monoglycerides, diglycerides, or raw veg. But that's very minimal, very, very minimal. Actually, you know what? We're going to call that contamination. We're going to call this a complete test. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, any of this product that hasn't been transesterified will most likely wash out anyhow. So uh, I think we're going to pull the plug on the reaction and we're going to uh, bring it into the settling container. Okay, so after doing the 327 test, we've decided that this uh, reaction is complete. And so I am going to... Uh, open this valve, which will push the product instead of into the reactor, into the settling tank. And then I'm going to close this valve to divert all of the flow into the settling tank. And uh, we're going to put, uh, let's see, it'll be 24 plus 5, about 29 gallons or so. And uh, after it's full, it'll come up to about this line. Uh, there are some things you can do. You can kill the reaction by putting about a gallon of water in there. Uh, they call that, I think, a 5% free wash. I've done that in the past. Um, you know, regardless, I, I think that uh, you can wash it out either way if you do it or if you don't do it. So the, uh, we're not going to choose to do the 5% free wash on this. We'll just put it in here. Now, I will tell you this. One time, and one time only did I stick my face down in here to try to look at the product. All those hot methanol fuses, it's uh, very hard. So please do not stick your face over here or get near these fuses because they are rough. Okay? And, and uh, I would suggest at this point to be wearing your safety glasses. Uh, it's definitely not fun to get that hot stuff in your eyes. So, after I get all the products from the, uh, from the processor into the settling vat here. It won't take but a few more minutes. I will let that sit for at least overnight, uh, probably 24 hours, and, and let, uh, let this settle out. The glycerin, as you saw when we did the, uh, the test for the completion, uh, it took about five to 10 minutes for that to settle out. Uh, a larger container like this is gonna take it's going to take longer than that. I would suggest to leave it definitely overnight. Uh, tomorrow or later when, when this product settles out, we'll demonstrate draining the blister now.